All right, hello everybody, good morning. Uh, we're gonna keep this short and sweet here. So we've got some problems uh, from all of statistics that are involving transformations of random variables. In this case, they're very simple, um, continuous random variables, but um, it's cool to see some of the stuff that we can do with them. So we're given that X and Y are uniformly distributed on zero to one, they're independent, um, and they want us to find a PDF for uh, a new random variable that's defined as x minus y and a random variable that's defined as x over y. Okay, so to start working through this, first it's good to just get a picture of what's going on. Let's see x-axis, 0 to 1, so the idea is um, there's equal, equal probability of x instantiating anywhere in 0 to 1, and there's equal probability of y instantiating anywhere in 0 to 1. Um, Okay, and so you'd imagine any point uh, in this square then is going to be equally probable. Okay, so we're going to, to let our new random variable z be x minus y. Um, sensible thing to do might be to find the range for z. So what values could z take on? Well, I mean, x minus y, x could at the very least be 0, and y could at the very most be 1, so z would see a minimum at minus 1. And likewise, if x were 1 and y were 0, z could take on a value of 1, but it wouldn't be able to exceed that. Adding anything to y would just take away from z. <clears throat> okay, now we want to visualize the set of all x, y implied by some fixed z. So we're given, or we've defined z to be x minus y. So basically, if we want to take a peek at like what uh, values of x and y satisfy this, this equation, we could like fix z, solve this thing for y, and we'd get y equals x minus z. And so this is just going to be like some line segment, um, positive slope, right, because it's you know, y equals x, but this thing could be shifted around depending on where z is. So if z was uh, negative, this would be x plus something, so we'd get like some kind of line segment up here. So those are would be the com all combinations of x and y satisfying the equation would be on that line. Okay, so then we want to check and see the behavior of z at important points and um, I put important in quotes because it's, it might not be entirely clear what those points are. I've done the problem, so I know that we can essentially think about like zones of activity for how, you know, how our area function is going to be behaving. So I, I kind of like, it's kind of a spoiler alert. But you know, at, you know, it's good to see what's going on at the extremes. So if z is equal to minus 1, then y is equal to x plus 1, and we'd be looking at this line here. Um, and so here we can see why z... I said it can take on a minimum value of minus 1, right, but that would be, that would be like it. I mean, the probability of that having, there's only like one point that has that, that property, so it's like, it's not any significant uh, probability of that really happening. Um, okay, likewise, if z was equal to 0, x, y would just be equal to x, so we'd be talking about um, points on this line, and where z is equal to 1, y is equal to x minus 1, and we're talking about points on this line. Um, again, in terms of probability, you know, we can already see that, like, the probability of z being, like, less than or equal to 1, I mean, you've got, you, you've accumulated, you've, you're talking about all possible x and y values are, like, sort of subsumed by this line. Um, to trap, to move this line from here to down here, you would sort of soak up the entire area of the square. Oops, sorry. Boop. 
Okay, so I just copied and pasted that so that we have it here. So then the next step is we have to make our sort of intuitive leap, which I was sort of just hinting at, concerning the probability of Z instantiating less than a particular value, small z. Okay, so because x and y are uniformly distributed, we can equate this probability with the cumulative area subsumed by y equals x minus z. And this will suggest our CDF for z, our cumulative distribution function for z. So we can go ahead and formalize what's going on with the CDF. We call it capital FZ of z. Well, we know basically that uh, in negative, on negative infinity to minus 1, uh, z is not going to have any density because the way that x and y are defined, uh, z doesn't have any density there. <laughs> um, okay, so basically we, we've decided we need to get at the areas of these triangles, okay? So if z is between negative 1 and 0, which we said is corresponding to these two situations, as z increases, you're, you're shading in more and more area of the triangle. And how are you doing that? Well, we know that the area of the triangle is the base times the height. Um, so the base is asking us basically about the x value when y equals 1 given a particular um, given a particular value of z which is going to tell you like how this line is shifted up and down on the y-axis so we know that y equals x minus z when y equals 1 1 equals x minus z so x is going to be equal to 1 plus z and that's our base of this triangle uh, similarly the height is just going to be 1, which is the height of the entire square, minus the y value when x is 0 for the given line stipulated by z. So we get y equals x minus z. We've said that x is equal to 0, so y is equal to minus z. So our height, our height is 1 minus minus z, or 1 plus z. Okay, so we've got this base times height over 2 is going to be the area of our triangle up until we get to this point. But then the situation changes a bit. So as you can see, as we keep sliding the line along here, now we've got this sort of shrinking triangle thing happening. And so the good way to get at the area of the square minus that triangle, that shrinking triangle is exactly that, to get, take the area of the square which is 1, sorry, we're going to shift our attention over here to this picture, okay? So this is the situation where z is greater than um, 0. So the area of this little triangle then, well, again, we're going to take 1 half base times the height. The base, well, it's 1 minus the x value. In particular, the x value when y is equal to 0. Okay, so if y equals x minus z, uh, 0 equals x minus z, so x is equal to z. So we've got 1 minus z for the base piece. And when <clears throat> for the height, well, the height is just the y value when x equals 1 of whatever line is implied by the z value we're talking about. So oh, h equals y when x equals 1, y equals x minus z, y equals 1 minus z would be our height. Okay, so then we get our base times our height divided by 2. Um, and basically, once you have this piece, which is your CDF, all you would need to do is take uh, d by dz of each one of these pieces to give you your... Um, your your PDF. Okay, so that's like kind of the easier one. Okay, and then for x over z, it's a bit trickier. And how much of this am I actually going to go through? Okay, so the place to start here is to like let let x equal y. 
Okay, so then we know that z is equal to 1. I say since z is equal to x over y, we can visualize this situation as the uh, like on our xy plane, we can picture x over z, which is x over 1, which is just x. So we all know what the line y equals x looks like. So this corresponds to a situation where z is equal to 1. So I guess the hope is that, you know, if z was, like, less than 1, that would somehow be talking about um, points on this side of the line, and if z was greater than 1, we'd be talking about points on this side of the line. Well, let's see if that's actually the case. So imagine that x and y are somewhere in region 1. Okay, what do we know? Like, by virtue of being sort of on the north side of this line, we know that x values cannot exceed our y values. Right? Like, suppose I wanted to get, you know, a nice, nice big x, like 0.5. Well, we know that y at that point is 0.5, and we know that anything else in the region y is greater than 0.5. So our, our y's are sort of trapped, sorry, our x's are sort of trapped underneath our y's. Okay, which means that z, which is this fraction, cannot exceed 1. But y can certainly exceed x, which allows z to sort of uh, vanish towards 0, but again, it can't go under zero because uh, the x values can never be negative. Okay, so each x, y in region one, let's just for argument's sake take the point like point two, point five, so something like here, um, is going to imply some kind of line segment from the origin. So what do I say here? I say z is equal to x over y, which we know. z is equal to 0.2 over 0.5 in our case, which is equal to 2 fifths. Now you might be tempted to say, well, 2 fifths for z, and z is something like the slope, so why, like, wouldn't that line be over here? Well, the thing is we need to put, to make a visual representation of what's happening at that value of z in the xy plane, we want to picture like a y equals f of x type thing. So if we solve it for y, we get y equals x over z, which is equal to x over 2 fifths, which is actually equal to 5 halves x, which gives us our nice sort of positive uh, greater than 1 slope that we were after. So this is like where the real, the real sort of mental magic has to happen. That we've, okay, I, I sort of randomly picked 0.2 and 0.5, right? But the idea is that if x and y were any smaller than those values, say 0 0.1, 0 0.3, this would give a z of 1 third, y would be equal to 3x, which would be even steeper. So the whole idea is to see that the probability that our z random variable is less than some instantiation of itself z is equal to the area total area of this square that's subsumed by the line y equals 1 over z times x. Right, so if you if you give me a, a z value um, that's between 0 and 1, I can assure you once we like visualize the the line segment that's implied by that. I can guarantee you that any x and y smaller than what you gave me is going to give you an even steeper sloped line. Okay, so that's like the whole thing that's going on here. And then we can ask, uh, well, what is that area? Well, the area of the triangle is still one half base times height. The height is always going to be one. It's fixed here. And the base is just the x value where a line with slope 1 over z is equal to 1. Because we're interested with the point uh, of intersection with the line y equals 1 up here. Okay, well, if y equals x over z and y equals 1, that means that x is just equal to z. 
Okay, so now we can say that the area of this triangle is just 1 half 1 times z, or z over 2. So that takes care of region 1, but remains to be seen is how we deal with the situation for region 2. And how do we do that? Sorry, spoiler alert, I've, I've already done it here. But so this is just to summarize what we've done so far. We know that there's uh, no, no density accumulating between negative infinity and zero. Um, we know that between zero and one, your, your cumulative probability is z over two. Okay, so what happens in region two? So now we're in a situation where x can exceed y which allows z to grow without bound. So just as like a little sort of intuitive example, let's say we fix y to be uh, 0.5 again. Yeah, let's let y be like 0.5. And then what could happen with x? Well, x, x could be 0.5. But, you know, x could also go anywhere up to, okay, may, may, maybe this isn't the way to put it. Maybe fix x at 0.5, and what can happen with y? Well, y can get as small as we want, okay? So if we had like 0.5 over y, and y is going to 0, this fraction is going to shoot up to infinity. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what happens in this region? We have that the cumulative area, the probability of z being less than z, is now going to be the area of this square minus the area of the triangle that's implied by our choice of x and y. Okay, so again, area of the triangle is just base times height over 2. Um, we know that the base is always going to be 1, so that's easy. And the y value is just going to be the value of the line y equals x over z when x is equal to 1. Okay? So we would have y is equal to 1 over z, which is exactly what we're looking for. So the area of the triangle then is 1 times 1 over z over 2, or 1 over 2z. And the probability that z is going to be less than z is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over 2z. Okay, and that completes our CDF. Again, if you want to move to the PDF, it's just a matter of differentiating each one of these pieces with respect to z. Alrighty.